Hey guys, Space Marine 658 here. Um, I wanted to address uh, some talkings I've seen recently about Nanite and performance and LODs and things like that. Um, and kind of maybe add a little bit to the discussion here. Um, now I'm going to link down below at Unreal Engine recently. There was a great talk about uh, misconceptions in Unreal Engine. And he kind of covers this a bit. Um, and, and he really talks about, I think, the best use cases for things like Nanite, where it works and where it doesn't. Um, I didn't want to address that specifically because that's excellent work by him. Um, specifically, though, I wanted to address um, Threat Interactive's video on uh, basically just claiming that Nanite is overall always bad. Um, and I think that that is just, at least that's the vibe I got from his video, is that you should never ever use it. You should always use, you know, all of these other options. Um, and that, uh, at least from what I understand of his video, that he thinks that there's a better way to do it. And definitely, you know, Unreal Engine is not the perfect engine. Like they've made mistakes, they've made issues, uh, and definitely things can always improve. There's always room for improvement. But I wanted to kind of discuss that initial assumption, um, at least what a lot of people are taking away from that video. I see a lot of these comments popping up in uh, both the Reddit and the Slackers Discord, in the you know claims that you know Nanite is always bad and that you should just never use it. Uh, and I just want to tell you flat out. You know that's not true now there definitely are cases where it makes sense to use it and cases where it doesn't make sense to use it and there is some overhead but i kind of wanted to show you here a a more grounded example of of what you might be looking at um in terms of you know why you would want to use nanite and where you can see the most performance gains now to start off with we need to talk about what nanite is meant for um, Nanite is designed around the idea of um, basically taking your mesh and instead of um, rendering the whole thing when any part of it is on screen, it's sort of breaking it down into um, what they call like cells. Uh, let me kind of show you here. Uh, let me actually just crank up the default uh, fields here. Um, so what I've done is I've created a blueprint here that will create us some static meshes. Um, it's a very simple thing. It's just creating a grid um, with some spacing in between it um, to kind of show you what that might look like. Now, as you can see here, um, I have created my grid. I've got these different meshes. Now, if we actually open up this mesh, this is nothing crazy. You know, it's a relatively high poly at 4,000 um, by 6,000 verts. Um, so you know it it's it's it definitely has room for improvement in and of itself um but there are some ways you can get some really simple gains out of it now um a couple of things you might want to do for example here i've gone in by default unreal engine only had one lod now you can add up to eight lod's by default now these are generated lod's created by unreal engine so they may not always look great um, in fact, custom LODs can be a better way to go depending on the mesh itself, the size it is. Um, and of course, you know, there are some things you can do to play with the screen size so that as you go further away, you know, it only switches to certain LODs. You can, you can tweak those settings. Um, but by default, this is just how it came other than I've added five LODs here. So all I did is I changed this number, uh, which you can go ahead and do as well. And then I hit apply changes. Now, um, there's also LOD groups. These can also affect... Um, certain settings and things like that. Uh, but the cool thing is when you once you've set up a few LODs here through Unreal Engine's automated system, you can go ahead and you can select and actually see what these LODs look like. Now the cool thing is with this mesh, because it distance, you're really you know, not gonna be able to make out much details. Um, I allowed it to go pretty heavy ham on you know, how those LODs actually crank out. So as we can see, you know, as we go out, we start popping through those LODs. And see, it takes really, um, I guess it's a little bit before, uh, it takes pretty far before you hit that LOD4, which is the last LOD, because it goes from zero to four um, if you have five selected. Now, as you can see here, it drops all the way down to 300 triangles versus we probably could go lower than that um, just for, you know, because at that point, you're that far away, you could probably get away with, you know, <laughs> maybe two vertices or something like that, something crazy, um, pretty low. Uh, but the idea is, you know, part of my issue with his video when talking about Nanite was the claim of like, you know, these LODs are, you know, always going to be better in terms of performance. But the funny thing is, you know, you can actually test this out yourself. This is something you can prove is wrong 
in and of itself. So let's go ahead and take a look. So as we can see here, we have Nanite turned off. Um, and with these spawned here, um, we're getting, you know, 37, 38. We could performance measure it with insights and get an exact, you know, amount of performance that it's taking. Um, but honestly, you can get pretty close with just, you know, as long as you have enough meshes on screen. So let's go ahead and just clear these out and get back to our baseline, uh, which is around, let me just save this, which is around, you know, 70s, upper 60s, lower 70s. Um, it kind of fluctuates a little bit. Um, but let's go ahead and uh, enable Nanite support and hit apply changes. And that's it. That's the only change we've made so far is just applying Nanite support. I'll go ahead and save. Of course, it's going to want you to save this because it references it. And you can see here, we've got a split second there where it's just updating everything. All right. Now, as you can see here, it almost looks like, you know, we've dropped some FPS, right? Because of course, Nanite itself is eating up some of that performance, right? But let's go ahead and construct our meshes here. Now you notice, despite us being at a sort of slightly lower average FPS without these static meshes, with all of these static meshes in, we gained ourselves anywhere on the order from 10 to 15 FPS. Um, and that's with just static meshes. That's not without, that's not with instant static meshes, higher static meshes, anything that's just Nanite support. That's it. Um, so as you can see there, that in and of itself there, that kind of disproves some of that argument of there are no reasons to ever use Nanite. Now, of course, you have to take, you know, Nanite as it is. There is overhead and there is, of course, cost. So let's look at some other examples of um, times you might use Nanite and why it may or may not be beneficial. So let's actually just disable Nanite support again, hit apply changes, go ahead, save and save. And you can see here we jump back up to our um, lower 70s and then let's go ahead and actually construct our instanced static meshes. Let me make sure I'm selecting the right one. Um, yeah, instance, my camera's kind of in the way of, of the screen a little bit. Um, so you can see here, so to kind of compare here, we've created instant static meshes. This is without Nanite. And we're getting about the same performance as non-instant stack meshes we're getting with Nanite. So that alone kind of tells you, okay, so it's working pretty similarly. Now, what is an instant stack mesh versus a regular static mesh versus a hierarchical static mesh, which we'll take a look at in a second. So the big difference you can basically look at as instant stack meshes are the cheapest um, in that they... Um, are really, really lightweight comparatively to regular static meshes. The idea is you instance a version of that static mesh uh, and it allows you a little bit of freedom and control over that instant static mesh, um, but you lose out on, um, I believe with instant static meshes, you lose out on um, the LODs. Now the benefit of hierarchical instant static meshes is you can get that LOD back. So let's actually take a look at those. So if we go ahead and clear field and then we construct our, our hierarchical ones, again, without Nanite, now we're in the low 50s. You know, we're starting to hit 50. So we're, we're gaining a little bit more performance and that's because these are now using LODs. So the very far ones out in the distance, you know, are being rendered at a little bit lower um, quality, but we're gaining back a little bit of that frame rate. So now what happens if you want to construct those with Nanite? Let's go ahead and turn that on. And we'll hit save on these and go back. And we should be back up to our um, 50 once it refreshes. Yeah, so we're about at 50s. So let's go ahead and um, construct our instance ones first. So as you can see here, we're running in the low 40s. So before we were getting about 46 to 47, but now with our instance ones, we're getting a little bit lower. And part of that is because we're losing some of that um, frame rate because while these are still instant stack meshes, um, that overhead of Nanite is eating into our frame here. And so it, it's actually making this less efficient than just having static meshes with Nanite supported. Let's go ahead and clear these out now and make our hierarchical ones. And as you can see, it's probably like a frame or two higher, but it's still very low. Um, so this is where I think the biggest benefit of Nanite is, 
in that um, you can basically use regular static meshes instead of needing to use instance or hierarchical. Now, that's not to say you shouldn't use instance and hierarchical for certain things and maybe turn off Nanite support. There are a lot of use cases. Like the engine is pretty big and there's a lot of different ways you can use you know, every type of static mesh. Um, but the big point I wanted to get across here, especially in 2025 with all of the talk of optimization and all of these things you can do is that there is no one size fits all answer to most problems with optimization. It is a learning process and you need to profile frequently. Um, I mean, even this as a extreme example of, you know, a single mesh, um, this doesn't necessarily show the whole picture, you know. Maybe if I dove in deeper, I might be able to find some ways I could optimize this mesh. And then maybe it'll get to the point where there's almost no difference between the Nanite and the um, instance. And then at that point, you know, the question is then, is the overhead worth it? You know, do I have other meshes that are using Nanite? Because once you have a single mesh using Nanite in there, you get that overhead. So there is that question of, you know, where do I draw the line? There are benefits to using Nanite, especially for things like this, where you can maybe make it a little bit simpler for yourself, right? Let's say you've put a lot of this single static mesh into your level, but you haven't grouped them in any kind of controlling actor. The benefit is here, you could turn on Nanite for that one mesh and you get the same performance as making an instance static mesh. Now you don't get as much performance gain as if it's a hierarchical instance static mesh, um, but you do get a pretty big boost in performance. And so that's the big point I wanted to make here today um, was that, you know, there is a lot of discussion about, you know, Nanite and, and how performant it really is. And I definitely think it has some room to grow. Um, and I would love to see some more support for, for different types of um, translucency and things like that that just aren't yet supported. Um, but I think that my big point was the argument of, you know, it's always bad all the time, you should turn it off. It's just not a valid argument um, in my opinion. But yeah, um, that's all I have to say here today. Um, if anybody has any questions, definitely leave them down below. But otherwise, good luck and good hunting.